What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Inscape tutorial for you. So in today's video, I just wanna go through a, a couple different ways that we could add lights to our renderings using the Inscape asset library. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, we're using an example model from the 3D warehouse. We're gonna use the Urban Multi-Unit Homes by Doug Dougie OP. Um, and uh, you can download this from the 3D warehouse and follow along if you'd like. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to use this model in order to kind of test out some different lighting strategies. So I'm not super worried about swapping out all of my different materials and making this like a super, super nice render as much as I want to look at some ways that we can just add lighting to this rendering. So um, first of all, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start up our Inkscape render and I wanna go ahead and I'm just holding the shift key and dragging the right mouse button. I wanna make this so that it's gonna be dark out um, in my rendering. So I don't really want the sun casting a whole lot of light. You can have a little bit in here um, from like her, your horizon or you can have it be all the way dark. Um, in this case, when I go to all the way dark, you can see how you're getting some lighting from the artificial uh, the artificial moon and the artificial sky. But what I want to do is I want to set this up so I'm getting a little less lighting from the artificial um, from the artificial setup, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I also want to set this up where I'm getting some different things that are emitting light inside of this rendering. So the first thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and let's add a street light to this rendering. So maybe down on the end of the road here. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use an object from the Inkscape asset library. And so to access the Inkscape asset library, you're going to click on the button that says asset library. And in this case, I've already run a search for light. And so what we want to do is we want to pick one of these street lights and we want to bring it in. In this case, I'm going to pick street light 03 and I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to move my mouse down here and I'm just going to click again. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize my outliner because that's slowing down my model a little bit. But all I want to do with this is once I've brought it in, I just want to use the rotate tool in order to rotate it so it has the proper orientation. And uh, we're not going to worry too much about its location right now. This ought to work just fine. But you can see how when we bring this in, at the moment the geometry is being brought in. So if I turn this back to daytime, but you can see how no actual lighting is being brought in and I think I have some depth of field turned on so let's turn that off real quick so we'll drag our depth of field down to zero so you can see how this brings in this Inkscape proxy object for your light and then over in Inkscape itself it actually loads this um, this actual geometry into your model and so the cool thing about this light is you can see how when we bring this in, this actually has an emitter material tied to the light fixture automatically. So you can see how there's a bunch of white in here that actually lights up so you can see like actual light inside of this rendering. And uh, so one thing we're gonna do really quick is we're gonna go into our environment settings. So we're gonna click in our visual settings um, under atmosphere and we're gonna turn down our night sky brightness for a little bit um, because you can see how what this is doing is with the exposure and everything else that's in here, it's kind of overwhelming the artificial light that's right there. So we'll go ahead and drag this all the way to the left or most of the way to the left for right now. And so you can see how what this is doing is this has an emitter material tied to it. But the problem is that emitter material is only strong enough to cast a little bit of light in our scene. So what we want to do is we want to add an artificial light underneath the tip of this street light. So in order to do that, we're going to go into our Inkscape objects and we're going to pick a light. And then this situation, there's really two kinds of lights that you can add in here. You can either add a spotlight, which is a light that has a direction associated with it, or you can add a sphere light, which is just a point of light that casts light in every direction. So let's start by adding a sphere light. So we'll just click on the button for sphere. Then we're just gonna zoom in, whoops. We're gonna click once in order to set a base point. We're gonna move this down just a little bit below our light fixture. And so you can see how now what's happening is this uh, point light or this sphere light that we've brought in is casting light in all different directions. So, and you can adjust both the, the size of the light source and also the intensity of the light using these sliders when you select this light. So you can see how you can use this in order to um, set the way that this this sphere light casts light inside of your rendering. 
And so that is one way to do that. The other way to do that is let's go ahead and make a copy of this light. So I'm just going to select it inside of SketchUp. And I'm going to make a copy using the Move tool. And we'll say this copy is going to be 30 feet down the road for right now. So now we have a second light in here. Well, for the second light, let's take a look at what the spotlight looks like. So we're just going to add a spotlight by clicking on Spot. We'll come click on this point right here to set a base point and I'm going to move it down just a bit so that it's a little below this light and then I'm going to set it so that it's on this face and we'll go ahead and set it so that it's pointing straight down. And so you can see how if we look inside of our rendering, this is also casting light, but it's casting the light a little bit differently. Like for example, the lighting is much more um, the lighting is much more directed into this little cone right here and you can adjust that by clicking and dragging this beam angle slider but you can see how the difference between the point light and the spotlight is the spotlight is kind of limited in the direction that your light goes or how far out your light will stray so you can see how even if I drag this all the way up to 90 degrees I'm not getting the spread of the light that I am with the point light so, and you can set these up however you want. You can, and you can see how you can also adjust the brightness of this using the slider as well. But you can use either one of these. It just kind of depends on the look that you're going for. So in this situation, I feel like the point light is giving me a little bit better light than the spotlight. So we're probably going to use that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to delete out my spotlight and this other light. And what we want to do is we want to start making copies of this object with the uh, point light or the sphere light associated with it. And so all I want to do in this situation is I just want to take these two objects. So I'm just going to do a shift click to select both of them. I just want to right click on them and I'm going to make them a component. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this street light. And so when we do that, we're going to create a component with the name Streetlight. So now what I can do is I can use the Move tool in copy mode to make multiple different copies of this. So I'm going to type in a value of 30 feet and hit the Enter key. And then I'm going to type times 6 and hit the Enter key. So what that's going to do is that's going to create 6 copies of this light. Well, Now, if we look at our street, you can see how our street is being lit by these point lights right here. And so I would say in this situation, probably what I want to do is I want to zoom in and I want to select one of these. And it doesn't really matter which one. We're just going to double click in here and pick one of them. And I'm going to bring the brightness of these lights down a little bit so that I'm getting a little bit more of a point showing up in here rather than it just kind of casting light everywhere in the background. And so now we've got our street lights in here kind of lighting up our street. But what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of light definition to the buildings. And so what I want to do is I want to add a couple lights inside of my rendering um, inside of the windows of this building. So I want it to look like these are kind of lit up in the background. So there's a couple different ways you could do this as well. So for example, um, what I'm going to do, and we'll go ahead and close these menus for a second, is I'm going to take a section cut across the face of these buildings, and I'm just going to add a couple point lights inside of these that are going to cast light out the windows. So they're not going to be super bright, but they're just going to make it look like there's people inside of these houses. So I'm just going to click on the button for section plane, and I'm just going to cut a section plane across this whole building. So, and I actually already have one in here, so let's delete out one of those. But we'll just use the move tool in order to cut this section plane a little further like this. And if you remember, every one of these rooms had windows in it. So what I want to do is I just want to go through and I want to kind of randomly place some sphere lights inside of these spaces that are going to cast a little bit of light. And they don't need to be super bright. In fact, I'd recommend that they're not. But we're just going to cast, we just want enough light in here that it looks like somebody's living inside of these spaces. So you can see how I'm just kind of moving in here and just kind of randomly placing these point lights. And you could do this with like a rectangle light or a disc light as well. But let's go ahead and turn off our active cut. And so now, if we look at the way this renders out, what we've got is we've got some lights in the background in all of these different spaces. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna use my outliner really quick. 
to just adjust these so that they're a little less bright. So these point lights are all inside of the outliner, so you can just click on them. And you can see how you can just kind of adjust this a little bit. So for each one of these, I'm just adjusting them. And I'm just kind of looking at what the light looks like inside of my rendering so that it looks like kind of a soft light coming out the windows. And so now let's say I was to export a scene using these settings. So right now, if I look at this, it's a little bit weird. I feel like the artificial lighting is kind of overwhelming the sky a little bit. So what we can do is we can go back inside of our visual settings in Inkscape and in our atmosphere, we can adjust this so that our artificial light brightness isn't as bright. And we can adjust this so that our night sky is actually brighter. So you can see I can use this slider over here to turn my light, night sky up. And I can use this artificial light brightness in order to turn the artificial light brightness down. And so one thing I might do in here, because I don't really like this about this scene, is I don't really feel like the emitter that's built into these is doing a very good job. Like, it's fine, but you can't really see it from this angle. So it kind of looks like we've got just random light in here and it's not being cast from a source. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside of Inkscape and I'm gonna double click inside of one of these lights. And a lot of this method is gonna depend on how you want this all to look. But what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna add a face move it down just a bit so that it's down below the face of this light and I'm going to reverse it and then I'm just going to apply a material to it and we're going to make that material an emitter. So you can see how I can apply this color E01 and then if I go into my materials I can set this option for self illumination and so what self illumination is going to do is that's going to allow me to set this so that this material is actually emitting light and honestly, you're also getting brightness off of the emitter material that was in there because it's bouncing off the back of this. And so now if we zoom back out inside of SketchUp, you can see how we have our components in here with our light fixture. You've got an emitter material down below the face in order to add some brightness to these lights. And then you've also got your point light or your sphere light down below casting light. And then if we were to orbit or zoom a little bit, you can see how we've also got some light coming out of the inside of our buildings as well. So obviously there's some material things and some plant things I would want to change, but this is a fairly easy way to light a night model in here. And then let's say we wanted to export this image. Well, one thing I might consider doing is I might consider adding a little bit of de depth of field. So I might set this up because these aren't as detailed as I'd like for them to be. Um, I might adjust these I might turn on my depth of field effect and set it so this is a little bit blurrier so that I'm getting a little bit more of just kind of a lighting effect in here and you can kind of play around with this. And so that's kind of an easy way to start adding artificial lights to your renderings. Now in this situation, there's probably a lot more lights that need to be added that would be things that would be in these houses and other things like that, but you can use these tools in order to do that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. So like I said, kind of an overview of a way that you can add artificial lights to the InScape asset objects. So usually you're gonna use that point light or that spotlight in order to do that. But um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.